In this video, we're going to be doing the definition of derivative. If this first slide looks a little confusing, that's okay. The goal of the whole video is to understand this slide. Our central question here is, what is a derivative? Here's a random function. It looks like a cubic polynomial, kind of a rough sketch, but it could be any function. We're assumed to be given a point, x equals a. What that does for me is it allows me to find the coordinates of a point on the curve at x equals a. I get the x coordinate, x equals a, again that could be 5, 1, whatever, and the y coordinate I get by plugging x equals a into the function. So let's zoom into this graph. The next thing to do is to label a nearby point. I'm going to go to the right, so I'm going to say a plus some small quantity, which I'm going to call h. So h, you can think of like being 0 0.01, 0 0.00001, a millionth, a billion, something that is super small h is some small and positive quantity, right? If I add a positive quantity, h, that's going to put it to the right of x equals a. In this picture here, h is small and positive. Now this new x value has its own coordinates. The x value is a plus h, and the y value I get by taking the function and plugging in a plus h. Draw a straight line in between these two points. It's a little tricky to draw a straight line on this thing. I'm going to ask what is the slope of the white line that's drawn here? Let's subtract the y coordinates. Okay, so that's our change in y in the numerator. And now we're going to divide by change in x. So got to keep the order consistent. Here's my x value on the right and on the left. You can see immediately these guys cancel out. And then I'll be left with just h in the denominator. This is a very important expression. So remember what it means. It means the slope of the line that goes in between a comma f of a and a plus h comma f of a plus h. This is a secant line. There we go. Now my terminology is updated. Now let's go back to the first slide. Let me bring out the lightsaber here. So these expressions here, what they mean are slope of a secant line. Now let's address the limit part. If h approaches zero from the left, then the h values are negative. This one's different down here. If h approaches zero from the right, then these h values are supposed to be positive. So let's go back to the picture that we drew. I drew this picture with h being small and positive. The right-handed endpoint is getting closer and closer to x equals a, while x equals a is staying stationary. Now let's zoom out. These lines in general look like they're approaching another line, which is the tangent line which only touches the function once at x equals a. Now, if it looks like it touches more, that's because it's pretty challenging to draw on the iPad, but you get the idea. The white lines cross the function two times, and the red guy, which is a tangent line, only crosses once. The slopes of the secant lines will approach the slope of a tangent line. So this is the definition of a derivative. As h approaches zero from the left, we still get the slope of a tangent line, except we did it by approaching from the left. Okay, so let's try an example. y is equal to x squared and x equals three down here. Because I'm calculating the left derivative, when I do my a plus h, which here means 3 plus h, the h values are going to be negative. It will be slightly to the left of 3. So I'm going to say 3 plus h. And I can draw a secant line. As h gets smaller, my secant lines, they approach a tangent line. Uh, crosses the y equals x squared graph just once. Let's calculate it. We're taking the limit of f of 3 plus h minus f of 3 divided by h. Got to plug this stuff into my function. When I plug in 3 plus h, I get 3 plus h squared. When I plug in 3, I get 3 squared divided by h. If h is going to 0, then the denominator is 0, and the numerator, if the h goes away, then I have 3 squared minus 3 squared, which is 0. So of course, this is an undefined limit so far until I do the algebra. So let's foil it out. Now I have a well-defined limit. As h approaches 0, 6 plus h approaches 6. This 6 is the slope of the tangent line on the graph of x squared at x equals 3. So now we know the slope of this red tangent line is 6. 
Another way to say it is that the left derivative of y equals x squared at x equals 3, the left derivative is 6. That's what we calculated. Do you think we would have gotten a different answer if we had done the right derivative? Well, let's try it out. The function is still x squared. The algebra is still going to stay the same, except now I'm using positive h's instead of negative h's. But each step along the way here is really not changing at all. But they're still approaching zero, which means that the final answer is still six. The reason why this happens is because x squared is a super nice function. x squared has nothing crazy going on. So it turns out that the left derivative and the right derivative, they're both six. Let's look at another example. First I'll draw the picture. Square root function, of course at x equals four, we've got y is equal to two. Now what we're going to do is find the slope of the tangent line. Not the equation of the tangent line, right? Just the slope, just the m, the slope of the tangent line. Let's calculate it. We're going to take the limit as h goes to 0, f of 4 plus h minus f of 4. I'm not going to specify plus and minus because it turns out for this function, they're actually going to give me the same answer. Square root of 4 plus h minus square root of 4 all over h. If this goes to zero, then I have square root of four minus square root of four in the numerator, which is zero. And the denominator is also approaching zero, so we have sort of a zero over zero situation, which is undefined. We're gonna have to rationalize, rationalize the numerator. Good news, the fours are canceling, the h's are canceling, and now we have a well-defined limit. And the value of the limit is one over two plus two, in other words, one over four. So we were asked to find the slope of this red line, and we did that. The slope is equal to 1 4. This is for the tangent line, which is on the function square root of x at x equals 4, right? That particular tangent line has slope 1 4, in contrast to the other tangent line that we calculated that we got 6. Every tangent line is going to have a different slope that we get from these limits. Let's talk about some terminology with derivatives. When do they exist and when do they not exist? Remember that when we're taking the limit of a function, we're normally just talking about the height of the function. And when we say that limit exists, we mean that the left limit equals the right limit. As we talked about in previous videos, the limit exists here because the heights approaching on the left match up with the heights approaching on the right. I like to say heights matching up is like a regular limit that we started with many videos videos ago in the beginning of this class. For the derivative, we're talking about the slopes of the secant lines. So in order for this type of limit to exist, I want the slopes of the secant lines on the left to match up with the slopes of the secant lines from the right. I like to say in this scenario, the slopes have to match up on the left and the right. How about if we check out this picture above? Does the slope on the left of the secant lines match up with the slope on the right of the secant lines at x equals a? The answer for this picture is absolutely no, they do not. So although this picture is continuous, it's not differentiable because there's a different slope on the left and then it suddenly jumps to another value on the right. We also call this a kink in the graph. This picture down below is what it would have to look like if it were differentiable. The secant lines on the left would have to match up the slope of the secant lines on the right. So it has to be a smooth transition and the slope of the function has to be matching up on the left and the right in order to be differentiable. Okay, so just a recap here of the terminology. In the beginning, we were talking about the height of the function. And if that limit exists and is equal to f of a, that's called continuous at x equals a. Now, in this video, we're talking about the slope of the secant lines. If this limit exists, then the slopes match up on the left and the right, and this is called differentiable at x equals a. Whatever the value of that limit is, is called the derivative. That is the definition of derivative. Looking at some examples here in this graph, you can see that the height approaching on the left and the height approaching on the right do agree at the same value. They match up. However, the slopes do not. The slope on the right of the secant lines would be a negative number and the slopes on the right would be a positive number. There's a kink in the graph. There's a jump in the slopes of the graph at x equals a. So this is, picture is continuous at x equals a, but it's not differentiable at x equals a. Here's an example of a picture that is continuous and differentiable. The heights match up and the slopes match up. Let's look at an example that's a little bit trickier here. Clearly this is not continuous since the height on the left is not the same as the height approaching on the right. Now what 
what about differentiability? So if we're on the left side here, as the H value approaches zero, let's see what happens. As the H gets closer to zero, this second point here on the secant line moves closer to x equals a and the slope moves a little bit. Go even further and the slope moves a little bit. You can see that in this picture, the limit of the slopes of the secant lines on the left side is gonna be some positive number, some finite number that's just a positive slope on the left. Let's do the same process on the right. Remember that one point of contact is at x equals a, which on this function is the filled in point right here. The other point of contact is at a plus h and now h is going to be a positive number because we're on the right side. As h approaches 0, this gets closer and closer to a, and this point moves a bit, changing the slope of the line. As you continue here, moving this point, this red secant line is having a slope that's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, actually approaching infinity. The slopes on the left are not matching up with the slopes on the right, so this is not differentiable at x equals a. This is the definition of derivative that we mostly introduced in this video. There's another way of labeling the graph instead of labeling the neighboring point as a plus h and having h approach zero, that's definition number one, we're gonna label that point as just x. And then x will be approaching a in order for these two points to get closer and closer to each other. So in this case, the secant slope formula is f of x minus f of a, that's the change in y, divided by x minus a, which is the change in x. All of the theory, all of the ideas are exactly the same, except this definition has h approaching zero, and this definition has x approaching a. There's the definition of derivative using limits. We'll see you in class.